Taking a critical look at the gaming news of the week, this is Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast for September 8th, 2018. My name is Ash Unity, and I'm here, as always, with Cybsidian. How are you doing this morning, sir? Good morning. I am uh, finally recovering from this uh, flu thing, so this is good. You had the flu? It's very good. Yeah, well, not not the flu, the cold, a cold or something. I don't know what it was, but it was annoying. <laughs> you, your human um, germs and, and things are, are really quite gross. They, they plug up the... Uh, the processors way too much. It's it's it's. I don't know how you. I don't know how people live like this. You lead a complicated life. Anyway, if you're listening live this morning, please say hello in the live chat. Send us your questions and comments there as well, and we will read and respond to as many as we can throughout the podcast. And uh, we've got lots of uh, great news this morning. We've got stuff about Fallout 76. We've got stuff about Cyberpunk 2077. We have stuff about Borderlands 3, of all things. So, uh, yeah, lots to discuss this morning, so let's get right to it. But first, oh, hello to everyone who is talking in the live chat already. Hello, Notional, HTK Gaming, and King Weeb, and also everyone else who is tuning in live this morning. Uh, thanks so much for listening, and we hope that you uh, enjoy the news that we have for you today. So uh, we're going to start off with some info about Fallout 76, and we've got some info about the main quests and uh, things like server population size. And yeah, like they're that. starting so, to, yeah, they're starting to go out of their way to start to confirm things now, and and so it's really exciting to see how that they're, they're putting this stuff together. We also have a little bit of of news about how the PvP system works and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's really good to finally like start getting some actual info on this stuff. So I'm I'm really excited about that. So um, as far as Cyberpunk goes, we had uh, there's not a ton of info. Uh, this week on that uh, that's 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 like new new uh, so which usually means that probably tomorrow or Monday they're gonna, pop, they're gonna drop something big again this is this is uh, how they've been like running their stories and running the news um, over there at uh, CDPR is every every time there's a die down they release something new or they put out something new they put out uh, a new screenshot this week when when news was quite low um, so it's so it's really good to see them like really going out of their way to make sure that the news has been constant and that there's always something to be talking about. So that's really got to fuel that hype. <laughs> so train. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. Got, they're, they're fueling the hype train really, really awesomely well. Okay. So, <clears throat> so uh, all right. So we were going to start with Fallout seventy six though. So what? Yeah. Uh, so what is? Uh, well, I'll just let you take it away, side. So there's there's a couple funny things. Uh, there's the this whole Nuka Dark Rum that's that's come out, which is right, hilarious. Yeah. So they've very actually released site. <laughs> yeah, very, it's a very, very smooth site. Very classic I, website. I, yeah, yeah. I I still don't know if it's actually like sponsored by like by Bethesda directly. I I was well, I was poking around on the site and I couldn't really figure out like there were no direct links to them and but there was a lot of official art. So I was like, huh. I think. I would think it would have to be because they would have to license that from Bethesda because that is, that's that's in-game assets. That's uh, you know that's yeah probably a but, graphic but, that has that yeah. exists in in their in their games. So, so. It's, it, but it's interesting to see them. Um, this drink is seven, is is thirty five percent alcohol. This this dark cola rum. It's like, wow, that's a lot, <laughs> but it's. <laughs> But apparently it's really well, you're not good. Not meant like, to chug the bottle. Well, well, well in game I mean, you are, but yeah, like in in gaming, you like down it in like <laughs> two seconds. So I don't know, or not even two seconds. You could freeze time and drink an entire case of this stuff and not explode somehow, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, this this uh, there, this I really like when they expand on this kind of stuff. And naturally, we uh, we've made videos on. Nuka Cola before, and we're going to be making a ton of new videos on Nuka Cola and what makes Nuka Cola or all the different types of it, um, all the different flavors. We're do even more than we've done before because now, compared to last time when we did this, there's been a whole bunch more recipes out and there's a whole bunch more stuff out. So we're going to be 
we're going to be getting to that as much as we can. <clears throat> so yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be really interesting. Uh, as far as the game now, 76, we've gotten some more info on that. The biggest thing being like we we have confirmed how PvP works, and then also how um, the servers are set up. So the servers are going to be set up before there was a lot of like talk about. Well, is it 36? Is it 40? Is it 50? Is it 100? Like, when they say small servers, what, are, In terms what of exactly population do they size, mean? You know. And what they seem to have settled on for sure now, and they've kind of said stated this, is this is pretty much official now, is 24 people per server, which is really small, actually. It's, like, not, not a whole lot there. Especially when you consider that this map is supposed to be four times the size of Fallout 4. Yeah, so and it's so in an area the size of Fallout Four, that's about six people, six yeah, human players. Yeah. So you can be incredibly spread out, and not only that, but basically when it, like when they're they're running around, they're doing this kind of content. Um, you're gonna be encountering so few people that encounters should technically be meaningful. So we'll see how that goes. Now the the way that the shooting. And the PvP is going to work is um, you can challenge somebody, but you can also challenge somebody just by shooting them once. And the the shot on them does very, very little damage. And then if they shoot you back, then it's full on. It's like you shoot them, it takes this little sliver of health. They shoot you, it takes a little sliver of health. And now it's like full on, it's on, baby. And, and you start to try and kill each other. Um, but they've also added a surrender flag too that should help you. Um, that'll help you like uh, if you accidentally hit somebody uh, that and they shot you back that you can say sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> in which case they will definitely like walk up and shoot you in the head. Um, you know because that's how people act on online. So yeah, there's um, that that's alleviated some fears as far as like griefing and causing issues and um yeah so that's that's a little bit interesting i still wonder like well what if somebody fires a fat man at you like is it still just a sliver of health or is that <laughs> going to be really really annoying and then also still like as far as the the pve content goes and and these big groups and and events that happen it's like well how much yeah, friendly fire do, well, friendly is going to be an yeah. issue yeah it's probably so, uh, i mean it probably recognizes if you're all in a group or a team yeah of if some you're kind, in a group then that's fine yeah if you're, if you're in a group friendly fire is off um but when it comes to like uh other groups forming in because some of these some of these functions and some of these events are like um supposed to be taken on by like more than four people so this is going to be really interesting as far as that happens and and if somebody fires a a fat man in the wrong direction by accident and then suddenly everybody's flagged up is that just gonna result in pure chaos but then again i guess it's a little bit like technically that that's what you had in in the previous fallout games so this will be really interesting to see how exactly this like plays out and how exactly this um this fits into what they're what they're going for so it'll be really interesting to see kind of how how this plays off so um I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, the quest stuff also they confirmed, um, which we talked a little bit about before, but basically it's like, so the, the overseer sends you a note, um, notes and, and calls and, and information via your Pip-Boy, and basically the there's a bit of a mystery around what exactly happened to the overseer, where exactly she went, what exactly she's doing, and then it it kind of like oh uh, we haven't gotten to uh, cyberpunk yet we're, we're, we're letting people get in uh they're they're dancing and max um so that basically they they have this story revolving around you the player and you know some of the other people in the vault which aka is other players or your friends and ultimately it, it ends up with you setting off a bunch of nukes for some reason somehow for some purpose that the overseer needs and or wants. Yeah, there's so, a good quote from Todd Howard here. I'll just read this. Mm -hmm. um, so she left before everybody. That's referring to the to the vault overseer. Overseer. She left secret instructions for you, and that's kind of the jumping off point for what we call the main quest. 
At the end of it, it, you launch the nukes. The nukes are a game system, but they are also part of the main story. Uh, and Howard went on to confirm 80%, the fallout everyone is used to, and the other 20% is really different. And Notional's trolling in the chat again, telling everybody... <laughs> Yeah, no, we're, as soon as <laughs> everybody that they missed, we're, we're going to get to the cyberpunk stuff. Just hold, hold your horses for we like, did not a few announce minutes. the cyberpunk release date. Um, right. And then, uh, Pete Hines had some interesting things to say about playing fallout 76 single player and what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, and really, yeah, Pete Hines, vice president of global marketing and communications stated that he had played fallout 76 solo. I know it was a concern in our community, and it was a concern for me because I play solo in a lot in games. Given my schedule, it's hard to find time to group up with folks. With my current character, my plan was, I'm walking out of the vault, and I'm going left. I haven't been over there before, and I don't know what's there. Let's see what happens. I came across some super mutants and got in a big fight with them, completed a few quests, and found this one location outside of a pharmaceutical plant that seemed like an awesome place for a camp. It had a good view from up on top of a mountain. I figured not a lot of people could see me up there. I've been using that base camp to go off and do quests. So, uh, he's he's playing it single player and seems to be seems to be enjoying it. And it looks it sounds like there's going to be quite a lot to do uh, if yeah. you're playing the game solo. So this is either going to be a great um, streaming game or a terrible one. <laughs> so, so. I, like I'm really hoping that this does well because right now I feel that that streaming games are a little bit on the like the repetitive and low side. It's like, hey, it's either Dota or it's um, League, which which League is dying right now. It's, it's quite fascinating, um, or it's Fortnite, and that's really that's really like the 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 big things in the room to be streaming right now. Uh, so it's. It would be nice if we got a, a game that we we're more comfortable with streaming with and getting into a little bit more. Uh, so, like, let us know what you guys are interested in watching a stream. Of course, Kiri streams Fortnite uh, multiple times a week. So, yeah, there's that. Um, one of the games that I've been playing and I've been wondering if I should stream is Divinity Original Sin 2. They just ha had the Definitive Edition go live. So, if you guys are interested in that, please let us know. Uh, now, um, any questions on the Fallout stuff? And if you have any, please feel free to, to post any. I'm also interested in, in seeing where you guys' uh, interest is for that because I want to, like, is this multiplayer online basically Minecraft with this, like, flavor of Fallout? Is this something that you guys are actually going to be interested in um, or not? Like, are you going to be planning on picking up this game or are you just going to watch other people play it or are you going to not have anything to do with it at all? Um, it's definitely going back to this more like, you know, simplistic role play RPG kind of game. Um, I don't know if I like that. I, I think I like the, the narrative, the story, the grand thing where it's like you're fighting for survival in the waste. And then, you know, ultimately it seems like it doesn't even matter or when it does matter, it, it, it only matters to your like grandchildren or great grandchildren because of, of what you can do right now. So. Um, right now, from what we're hearing, there is not supposed to be very much microtransaction. They do have these card packs where they, um, where they give you skills and stuff, but those are not bought. Those are only earned and you only earn a set amount of them, uh, while you're leveling. And then I don't know if there's other ways that you can earn them, but they've said for sure that those card packs, while they look like they are microtransactions, they are not, and they're not designed to be at all. And they won't be. So that's, that's a promise that Bethesda's made already. So let's hope they stick with that because that would be nice. So yes, absolutely. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Even though, I mean, you know, it, 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 it causes us to miss out on a sense of pride and accomplishment. We'd rather not have uh, microtransactions yeah, in the yeah, game. Yeah, you know, that the, the pride and accomplishment of shelling out like 800 bucks for a game. <laughs> it's just, it's like, hey, look at me. I couldn't even go to a bar and spend this on, you know, drinks. It's like... Hmm. Hello, Adam Smith and Max Mouse and... Uh... And Dancing on the Ashes, and we are going to get on to the uh, cyberpunk topics right now, actually. So, cyberpunk this week has been uh, pretty fun. They, they released some 
more screen. Uh, they, they released a new screenshot, um, or not really. Oh, it's a wallpaper. So it's like it's like a clearly it's an edited and like very carefully taken picture. Obviously, it's not just a screen grab of a demo, but um, it's interesting. Uh, but the more interesting news has come out, uh, mostly revolving around uh, the fact that that. I guess they've heard the call that people have been upset that you can't see your character constantly. And so they added what, of course, we were all hoping to have, and that is a selfie mode. So, you know, at any moment that you want to, you can pull out your camera or digital floating eye or what whatever they are going to have for that, and you can take a picture of yourself or of the... Um, of the of the uh, of the of Night City and its various citizens and and stuff like that. So it's and like then, a it's like a photo mode, but like for yeah, basically it's a it's a, basically a photo mode. <laughs> but you can take a picture of your character, like you, yeah. Well, that's typical of photo modes. You know what they you know what they could do? They could have that that photo mode camera just sort of follow you from behind and just keep it yep. in photo mode all the time. Yeah, and, and, and that, that would be an that, interesting that way be, to play the game. I don't know what they really, would call that. Maybe I actually, I actually had a, um, actually had an idea. It's like, it's like, what they should do is they should have one of your pet robots that you can have, and and you just make a little flying one, or, you know, that, that follows like a little drone. You know, people love drones these days, and you just have this little drone that follows you like just above your shoulder, and. And you can change it so that your vision is entirely that, but in the corner, in the bottom corner, you have the vision of your normal character so that when you're talking to people, you can see it right there too. It's like, that would actually fit into, I feel that that would actually fit into the lore of this, the universe. Somebody was very brilliant and said, oh, I have your third person uh, mode, and they showed a picture of a, of the eyeball of the character on a the end of a fishing uh, rod where the, the guy's just got it over his shoulder. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Could you ha, imagine ha. walking around for real with in third person, like with some <laughs> VR goggles on and, and then have some kind of drone just following you? Man, yeah. That, that, would yeah be, it's... that would be weird. That would be tough to get around. So, so uh, we're being a little fa- – I'm being a little tiny facetious, but – Basically, they said, hey, picture mode is in, and you can take selfies and stuff like that. So, basically, like, I am poking a little bit of fun, but at the same time, it's like, they're, they've definitely, like, they're definitely trying to accommodate things. One of the biggest complaints was, why can't I see my character when I want to? So, they said, "We, gee, people really like this. Well, let's add a camera mode so that you can see your character whenever you want to. Um and then, you know, and, and just like any, you know, normal teenager these days, you could probably pull it out and start taking selfies while you're in the middle of a conversation. Because, you know, that's what people do these days. So it's like, it's like, mm-hmm. there's, they're definitely like reaching now for, for trying to make people happy in a kind of a funny, <laughs> middle of a gunfight about your selfie. Yeah, like your selfie totally. Thing. Um, <clears throat> Which I don't know if you know, but if you've ever been in a in a gunfight in an urban setting, cell phones are actually pretty useful. You can do a lot of things with them. You can peek around corners with them. You can do all kinds of uh, uh, fun little little tricks with them. And um, you know, so anybody who's used to urban warfare probably already knows this. But you know, it's 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 uh, you know you don't have to freak out so much. But um, yeah, uh, so to do. King is asking if there's going to be an aim assist or something like that. Well, the game is made for the consoles, so of course there will be aim assist for people who play consoles because, you know, people who play consoles are casuals. Hey now. Fighting words. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, <laughs> like mouse and keyboard, clearly the superior technology. Um, however, I, I'm sure that, uh, that, that console users will be... Um, We'll be getting something to help them. Uh, de- you death animation is in third person. Isn't that's kind of interesting? Uh, it, because isn't that the way that most people report it? It's like 
oh yeah, near death experiences. I, I'm always hovering above my body. It's like, hmm, I wonder if that's. Uh, so you'll be able to see yourself be... every time you die. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's that. And take I a guess. selfie. Yeah, and take a selfie. <laughs> I'm gonna die now, but first, let me take a selfie. It's like, you know, you know what this is gonna. You know that song uh, that that people use in in um, in vines and in uh, and in like short little clips all the time. It's like, first, let me take a selfie, and then the 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 boom beat starts. It's like uh, that song is going to be probably one of the most used for for stuff within cyberpunk when people are doing that that's hilarious uh, it's so sad that vine went away the way that it did and then nothing replaced it i i kept hearing it's like oh no no somebody somebody will make a a replacement for vine nope never happened all those like 100 million subs from all those different viners put together and nothing ever replaced it and you still have mashups on youtube but still <clears throat> No comment. I never, I never really got into Vine. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn didn't have aim assist. Well, that's true, um, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't a big like shooter. And also, a lot of the um, in Horizon Zero Dawn, when you had, when you were shooting with the bow, oftentimes you were shooting at the ground to set traps. So aim assist wouldn't work there because how does the computer know where you're wanting to place a trap? Like it, it that that. That's why you didn't have it in that game, but overall, it's like most console shooters that are heavily like shooter based. Most of them do have aim assist. Well, I feel like um, shooting with a bow and arrow is different than shooting, you know, with a gun. Uh, mm -hmm. Bow and arrow is is more um, like it's 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 slower. Like you you take more time to line up your shot, that yeah. kind of a thing. It's not like you're not just kind of whipping whipping every which way firing 32 rounds per second kind of thing so yeah oh and um there was more job postings for multiplayer again okay. uh and there were a couple of there were a couple of sites this week who um some youtubers and some sites go going oh my goodness there's gonna be a multiplayer it's like hello we've been saying this for like you know years now and and they've been saying the studio CDPR has been saying this for years now. What we know is that it mo that there's a good chance that we won't see it in the base game at launch, but we will see it added to the game at some point because they're still hiring like crazy for this. This is one of the things where they, they want this and why this actually fits into the aim assist thing. We may not get an aim assist if this game really is going to incorporate a very large player versus player um multiplayer component to the game if it really is going to feature this multiplayer if we really are going to get that uh then this is one of these things where we just uh will will probably won't get the aim assist because this multiplayer system whatever it's going to be is going to they're going to want it to be um fair and uh and a good shooter and so they're going to try and encourage that right away which is postulated as to why they went first person because, you know, there's a lot of people who they look at third person shooter, which is which is fun, funny and very stupid because this is not the case at all. In reality, uh, third person shooters make a lot more money, however, are received less critically um, in the in the esports universe. So when you have an esports game, you have a bunch of like, you know, people that are the elitists and the 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 people that are up there who are going oh sorry but if it's third person then I can't possibly imagine that this game would be respected as a as an esports title like you have to have it on only be first person and um, then you 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 turn that around and and that really affects a lot of these developers there were a lot of developers who in the past they they had these great third person shooters who who tried to force a first person so that they could get respect as an esport, and it's like right now the top game in the world is not a first person. So the, your your reasoning behind this doesn't doesn't follow logic. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's one of the things that, that's that's happened. But whether or not that that was what CDPR was thinking, we we still don't know. 
not a hundred percent. That's me speculating. So, so don't worry about that. But as far as multiplayer, we know that it's it's there, and we know that they're still aiming to put it there because of all of this constant um, hiring for this stuff. They really want to make this work. Uh, they they probably ha are having issues implementing it uh, into the straight up single player story. It's like. You know they want immersion they want immersion they want immersion so when you're talking to a, a a punk on the street and then suddenly you get a an a ui notification um you know uh teabagger 34 wants to join your game it's like <laughs> you know that's that's like you that's less immersive so to speak so the the direction that they're going and they're pushing with this is they clearly want to have this game uh, come out and and affect and and um, impact the the experience in a in a good way, and they don't want to maybe drag down the first or the the, uh, this, the the main game the single player the story with that they don't want to drag that down with this like tacked on uh, multiplayer, but they are definitely looking at adding that. And again, I would be very shocked if we don't have it as uh, probably the first major DLC, uh, definitely the second major dlc for sure so hmm. all right g gamer says i think aim assist should be a mod you need to install for your character well that would certainly make it immersive and uh that would certainly yeah, that, would, that would certainly fit with uh, the lore of the game yeah, that, fairly well yeah that would make it more, now we did yeah. in the in the gameplay that was released we did see things like tracking bullets we saw the ricochet uh bullets that you can have so there are there are things like that that you can install on your weapons probably uh probably on yourself as well mm -hmm. um, so there will be things sort of akin to that in the game and there's all these smart weapons that you know that will have a you know aiming assist technology on them so th who knows they might not even need aim assist as a as sort of a um well, there, an external there's... game mechanic um yeah well there is that slowdown effect which really really i mean if if you're moving at like, you know, the the bullet speed that they're doing in the game, if you're having a hard time like hitting somebody who's moving, you know, like that, I keep thinking of the one shot where they're he's crossing the the that little catwalk thing inside the warehouse, and they shoot out his legs and then they shoot out his head and somehow he's still screaming. Um, <laughs> yes, that was rather funny. When when <laughs> when they when they're showing that, it's like you have to be really terrible. <laughs> to not be able to like line up that shot in that super slow-mo way so i i think that aim assist is is one of those things that they might try and keep away just to kind of try and keep future uh pvp a little bit more balanced and also like gear people more towards um being good at the shooting mechanic but again i don't know exactly we'll see because that that is that is something that's definitely there, and there are there are always um, there is always this large group of people in the gaming community who simply do not uh, play multiplayer at all. So that's always there. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Was there anything else on the cyberpunk front? Um, no, that's pretty much. It. Oh, um, the release date. So let's talk about the release date because. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, a bunch of articles started popping up about this. So um, the release date right now, there's a lot of people out there who are saying, oh, yeah, 2021, 2022. Like, you heard Mike Pondsmith. He said that we'll need years. Years, plural, meaning that at least two years, probably three or four. And this would be... Um, this would be a very, very bad move for CDPR. Uh, not only would they be showing a game that's four years away from release, that's like a massive no-no in in the world of of AAA gaming. You you just don't do that anymore. We've seen what happens when you when you try and push this stuff out too soon, when you start to tease the audience too soon, and then you make major changes to it. It just doesn't work, and it and it really peeves off a lot of people in the community. It just doesn't work. So plus, what, you have to be of, careful when, when you're yeah. t taking too seriously a an off the cuff comment like that. You know, he was in yeah. a live interview. He probably had a bunch of interviews. 
you know, it, and he was probably told not to say not certain to things. give. And yeah, because so if he came out and said like, uh, you know, you can wait seventeen more months for it, you know, the yeah. world would yeah. go crazy. <laughs> so, but what 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 has this? What has a bunch of these sites talking about this today? Well, basically, it's it's what we talked about um, a little while ago, and that's that if the game is playable from start to finish, that means that a lot of work is done. Most of the work is done, and basically now they're just polishing um, certain certain aspects, certain features of the game, toying with adding one or two new fe- features that aren't polished or even like really built out at all, uh, but also kind of what um, kind of what this leads to is is uh, and the assets. Sorry, they, they're still um, we have it on one or two good sources and then it's been mentioned several times that the assets are are not all the assets are in the game so uh so certain areas of the kind of like the external part of the city and the ruinous areas of the city between those two areas there's a lot of assets that are missing there's a lot of like placeholder graphics and stuff like that and they're still like they just finished hiring a bunch of like art asset people um, but it doesn't take you two years to finish off a building. It takes you a couple of weeks to finish off certain tile pieces and then a few more weeks to finish off an extra vehicle or two and then a few more weeks to finish off this and that and add more hairstyles, which they desperately need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So where they're at is with, with, with this release is there's now more and more people who are well-versed who probably have contacts in the company as well who are you know they 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 work with video games on a daily basis they work on reviewing content on a daily basis and what they're hearing is that the game's pretty far along and that um to expect this thing in 2021 or 2022 is probably ridiculous it's probably going to be out a lot sooner than that um, by a lot sooner, we mean probably early 2020 or late 2019, um, which is what we've been saying for a while now. Um, back at E3, we're like 12 to 18 months, basically. So, uh, sorry, eight to um, 18 months, roughly. It's like it's like there's a chance that we could get it this year, uh, but probably not. Probably in 2019. Uh, if it comes out in the fall, that's a great time for the release. It's a it it's it plays in really really perfectly. It's going to be the, one of the last big games of this console generation, and then less than you know a year and a half later, they're going to be able to release this for the uh, new consoles as well with a whole bunch of upgrades and a whole bunch of um, kidding out more you know more people on the streets. Uh, the whole wall shooting thing definitely is going to be in. Uh, you know, all this additional, inf- a lot of this additional stuff is going to be available. Flying cars, maybe, because that's up in the air right now, just because of the way that the the game can't handle loading that much stuff at once. It's so, a very crowded city I'm going to be flying through. Yes, it's a very crowded city, and when you're moving fast through crowded cities, there's a lot of issues. Right now, uh, what you could kind of tell, sort of, is that when you're on the highway and you're driving, and you're driving at the fast speeds... You're not seeing very much of the like. You're not seeing the alleys with the people and the you know the markets and all that kind of stuff. You're not seeing any of that. It's it's lifted you up and away, and it's probably not even loading that kind of stuff. And then when you take those off ramps and the car slows down considerably, and then you're like moving at a slower pace. That's when you start to see you know people on the side of the street again, and and whether or not you can run over those people or drive fast we don't know yet because we just we haven't had the the chance to see that yet so um so yeah my our my official guess and what more and more you're starting to hear from a lot of these sites out here is is expect this game 2019 2020 um but if it's anything past that i i honestly think if they're if they push us to 2021 and especially if they push us to 2022 you're gonna run into a lot of issues that the um that are now recognized to be universally a very bad thing. You do not want to release a game 
years ahead of time. There's always, a, there's always, you always want to release something like early on in development. You always want to like put out, Hey, we're working on this. This is what it, you know, this is kind of a snapshot in at this current moment of what, what we're going for. And then, you know, you can have a space of, of a few years, um, and then update people again. That's always good because the, you, you still have a chance to reach out and start to build a community around this game and around people wanting to play this game, uh, to allow them to, to start building on it and to start, you know, having these rumors and, and, and you getting some feedback that way, uh, in general, if you don't think developers pop on to discords and, and forum groups and, uh, where you have these hardcore people talking about the game that they're working on that's not due out for another two to three years, you're crazy. The devs absolutely do this. They don't they don't base tons and tons of stuff on this, but they are very interested in knowing and and hearing uh, where people are at with with what. And that's where you meet that's where you meet a lot of um, devs. And you'll be talking with somebody who's you know, part of a Discord group or part of a forum group for a while and then ultimately find out, oh my goodness, they actually work for the company. So yeah. Um and there's 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 hotspots. It's one of the great ways to, to meet people is like you just have to know where to hang out and who to talk to. Um because that that's usually how it goes. So uh I I can guarantee you that uh we have uh, uh between us and the Mad Queen there's several developers who spend a lot of time uh, watching our content we know that for a fact um and they spend a lot of uh, not just us they spend a lot of time watching other people like you know mr maddie plays and um there's a lot of developers who 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 watch and listen to what uh people like angry joe are saying people like boogie like these developers are interested in what the these commentators are saying about their products and saying about their their games in the long run and then they're wanting to try and and hit those things on the nose so that they can have this well-received game. Um, so that's kind of little, in, little inside baseball. But um, yeah, no, I think uh, I think with the news that we're getting now, we are definitely leaning towards a 2019 release. I would say probably fall 2019, um, 100%. I I think that that is the time that they will re- release the game. It it. It's really kind of perfect. Um, we know that there's a chance that we'll get the consoles. There's a very small chance that we might get a, a PlayStation console uh, next year. It's highly doubtful, highly doubtful, but there's still a chance. It's the tw- uh, 25th anniversary of PlayStation. Um, they have a whole bunch of big events planned for that year. A surprise console release definitely... Uh, makes sense on paper uh, whether or not it makes sense right in in this environment at this moment with the with the shifting technology that we have etc 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 probably not probably not but there is always still that chance and big companies want to make big impacts on people and the way that you make big impact on people right now is you can release a, a, a console or you can release some hardware when nobody's expecting it. Um, again, it's like, it's I can't stress enough, like maybe like 5%, 10% chance that that could happen. Uh, mm-hmm. Most likely we will see the new consoles released, uh, especially with the way that we've been hearing about this tech. They're going to be cementing um, hardware and some of the newer stuff that's out there. There's been some big jumps made in the graphical world. And there's also been some big jumps made in um, VR tech. And so they want to probably accommodate those things and really push that into um, into what what they're going to offer as the next big thing. So that's definitely where we need to like take a moment. Don't don't go crazy. <laughs> don't don't go crazy. But yes, know that that there is a very good chance that we will see this um we will see this content coming out or, or not content. We will see this, these hardware pieces coming out, um, in 2020, 2021, 2022, probably 2021 is maybe when they would come out, but I am expecting it a more likely, more than likely. I will, I would say that we will see both of the new consoles pop out around 2020, um, for sure. 
I think I think micro I think Microsoft is aiming for that. Um, and they might they, there's a small chance they might do an early season like early like early 2020, but I suspect probably closer to the fall 2020. Um, I think that's when they'll put that out, and I think that the Microsoft has been recruiting studios like crazy. We'd been hearing for months and months and months that they were trying to buy out a big company. Um, but instead what we found out is they've started to buy out smaller studios that were, are making good products. And then they're, um, they're not spoiling them. Like, Hey, here's a hundred million dollars. Go nuts. Uh, they're like, great. What do you need? And they're like, well, we need like maybe, you know, 2 million for funding and maybe a million for expansion. And they're like, okay, here's, here's, you know, here's 3.2 over the course of the next 18 months. Um, and that, and that kind of stuff is they're really, they're offering solid, um, healthy support for these new studios and the way that they've been kind of talking with, um, and talking about their, their next console kind of leads me to say, it's not going to be out next year. It's going to be out probably 2020. We're going to get a showcase of this stuff like crazy next year. Uh, E3, we're going to get the, you know, the, 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 we're going to like the, the console picture of like what it, what the console is going to look like. We're going to get some, you know, all this like random talk about, you know, what it potentially will have as far as the, like capabilities, etc. But yeah, Microsoft's in it full bore this time. They're they're not they're not messing around. So hopefully Sony uh, steps up to the plate and and tries to incorporate some of the stuff that people have been demanding for a long time. <laughs> cough, cough, crossplay. Cough, cough, crossplay. <laughs> <clears throat> we can dream. So yeah, uh, we can dream. Yeah. Um, just quickly getting back to Cyberpunk for a sec. Uh, S is asking, will they add more gore to the game? Uh, do we know anything uh, about that? So gore is one of those things where it's it's actually pretty easy to turn on and off. Um, as far as like blood, as far as like like intricate gore when you're looking at like dead bodies and stuff like that, um, I think we will see a little bit more or a little bit of an expansion on it a little bit. But Cyberpunk's not necessarily a a gore based game as unlike like um you know fallout's pretty heavy on the gore um there's a few other games that are that are that will showcase the gore because that's kind of what they are like doom for example i mean that's uh, that's like gore to the extreme um but as far as whether or not cyberpunk will have it um i think they'll keep some of that stuff tame a lot of their a lot of their players are based out of countries that have stronger rulings against core. Um, Germany has really steep rules when it comes to gore. Uh, and they're tough to get through. Those sensors in Germany are, are, are not, are not easy to please. And this is a game that will sell very, very well in Germany. Um, I suspect that more than 10% of their, their sales will come from Germany. Um, I'm, I'm pretty like, usually it's like five, six, 7%, but I think, I think it's going to be well over 10%. Um, this is a game that Germans like, this is a, a franchise that Germans have been excited to see put into a video game format for a while. So there, there, there's always some changes, um, between the titles and between the options that are in the game. So we'll see. I, for the moment, though, I wouldn't. Um, for the moment, I wouldn't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath for for seeing more gore than we have seen in the trailer. I think what we've seen in the trailer and the gameplay, I think there'll be some generalized improvement um, because I expect everything that we saw will have some generalized improvement. Um, but I don't think it'll be. Uh, I don't think it'll be up to the next level. If that's what you're asking, it'll definitely be improved uh, as far as like visually goes. But as far as like the level of it, it's don't expect it to be jumped to the next level. Expect it to be to hover around um, where it currently is, just uh, just improved um, textures and stuff like that. However, again, if they add modding, then we'll 
there's a chance that you'll see it more. It's like, it's like we didn't have a ton of gore in Skyrim, but there are mods that make that game crazy insane. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. Um, just, you know, go, go and encourage them to add modding to the game. Uh, if, if CDPR is really set on making this a, like making this a classic, one of the things they need to do is allow us to mod the game easily, somewhat easily at the very least. Right. Yeah, they, they could put out dev tools, but there's a difference between putting out dev tools and just making it so that you can mod the game. Um, there are ways that you can make it so like for example uh, mass effect mass effect is painful to mod it is incredibly difficult um to mod and and people have done it but it's not it's not it's not simple it's not easy it's a it's a very complicated thing period and oftentimes there's only so much modding that you can do um oh well you know there's there's modding on consoles now. You you can you can start to do that and just again just hope that hope that CDPR sees the benefit of of creating that. Um, one of the big things that we will see, especially as far as the next Microsoft console, is an a big increase on modded content for video games. We will see this because with what's happened with Skyrim and Fallout uh, Four is that that the big developers have taken note that modding is a way that they can make money. And as soon as a company realizes that, as soon as these developers, um, as soon as these developers and as soon as the, the console creators realize that they can let the community create content and then tack, put a tax on that where they make, you know, where they make passive income for doing nothing, at all, as soon as you have that, you're gonna see you're gonna see games start to offer that um, as as a baseline feature. Like as soon as it as soon as it hits that point where they go, oh, did you know that uh, Bethesda made uh, uh, 142 million dollars on mods last year? That they spent zero time working on themselves. As soon as somebody walks into a meeting. And says that, and says, "Here's a pie chart where we can increase our, you know, our 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 income by doing nothing, by having no additional uh, um, development studios, by having no additional uh, departments, by simply doing this and this and this, and it's something that we can do in a weekend." You're gonna you're gonna see that you're gonna see game studios, you're gonna see developers, and you're gonna see consoles just start to throw money at this kind of st- or th- not throw money. They're gonna you're gonna see them open the vaults and let us throw money into them. It's like that you know <laughs> that fry picture. Shut up and take my money. It's like like yeah, it's not gotten there yet because there's still a lot of like, well, how do we pull it off well? And that's what you see with Bethesda. Bethesda has been experimenting with. How do we pull off modding, make money off of it, but also have it free enough that we we don't get mired in these debacles and stuff like that? And they've been having those issues. They've been ha- they've had a lot of debacles, but yeah, still a few bugs to work out in the system. Oh but yeah, they're getting still there. A lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we love seeing everybody so active in the live chat. If you want to keep the conversation going after the live broadcast, we welcome you to join our Discord community. You can find the link in the description below. It's a place where you can chat with us and other Triple S fans about all the things we love to talk about. You can meet up with people to game with, stay up to date about everything we're doing here at the Triple S League. Click the link below to join and be sure to say hi to us in the welcome channel and then check out the great discussions going on in the discussion channels. Uh, There's always a lot of interesting stuff people are posting there, so... It's absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, final, now, final thing. Uh, yeah. So if you if you caught our video yesterday, you know we have some news about Borderlands Three, and uh, I'm and uh, the possible release window for that. So uh, we're just going to re- reiterate that here, and then uh, Sybe's going to expand on it a little bit. So so what do we have? We... There? We have lots of contacts in lots of places, which is really awesome. Uh, I've been working um, with people in the industry for a very, very long time. And I got from two separate sources um, in the same week, 
that Borderlands 3 has started localization, which is huge because this is a game that they've been very, very tight lipped on. Um, there, when, when Battleborn crashed and burned, uh, there was a lot of discussion over 2K whether or not the, or in Gearbox, whether or not that, um, the Borderlands thing had like played itself out. And the, the answer is no, because Borderlands wasn't Borderlands while it's connected to Battleborn through lore, um, the gameplay and the gameplay style was completely different. Um, right, yeah. the characters were just bonkers off the wall. Um, and there were a bunch of other little things that they messed up on that they really, really failed on. They, they, they had, it was a very, very expensive game for being an, basically being an Overwatch, uh, competitor. Overwatch was cheaper, more people were playing it, and Battleborn never dropped that price down to, um, to a comparative thing. They should have put that game out free to play. If they really wanted to have a challenge, and they still never did. That's the thing that confuses me. It's like, it's like at at some point, just put it out for free. Like, there's lots of lots of games that have made uh, comebacks because they they just put it out for free. So it, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah. But um, the the news that had come out about what they were working on for Borderlands Three has been out and has floated around a couple of times. They've confirmed that it's being worked on. Uh, but it's also being confirmed that uh, that it's that's you know far away from release, so to speak. Uh, I mean, in quotes, like, "Oh yeah, we're not releasing it this year. Uh, it's very far away." Um, then it turns out they release it that year. You know, it's 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 kind of like that. And that's something that studios love to do. Publishers love to do that. Um, but what we're hearing now is that they've entered into the um, localization, and this means that they're kind of in their last final steps. Um, not final, final, uh, they're probably anywhere between four and six months away from release, which puts them, um, which does put them right into a spring release, which would be what they were wanting to do for the next financial quarter, uh, for the next fiscal year, not financial quarter for the next fiscal year. Um, that puts them right there. And they've said before that this is, this is where they were wanting to, uh, drop a very successful, very large game. So looks like this is definitely something we're gonna have. So this is really cool, and I'm really, um, I'm really happy about this. This is, this has, this has really good implications uh, for this game, and then also for, uh, for the, um, for the community that loves it because it is, it is, a, it's, it's a first. It's one of those games where I can't play it because it, it's like a vomit comment. However, there is a third-person mod for it, and um, th that made it playable for me, and I en I really enjoy it. Um, that's something that I should almost play that. I should almost stream that with the third-person mod. You're on, talking about uh, uh, you're talking Borderlands about Two. Borderlands yeah. Two now, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's that's really cool. So the third one, um, we're going to be seeing a lot of changes to it. We're going to be seeing changes in the story, location and direction of the game and then some gameplay elements are also um it's been discussed how they're going to be doing uh other things so this is this is really 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 interesting i'm really excited to see where they take this from here all right excellent and that about wraps up all of the uh the topics that we had for this oh, morning rave. sorry rave has made a, rave has made a really good point um which i forgot to cover this week uh rave in the chat you are 100 percent correct when CDPR states that their game is in different settings, but like right now they say this is pre-alpha, and then when they go into alpha, and then when they go into beta, and then they go to release, um, a lot of people forget that CDPR approaches things uh, from a much more dictionary definition of these terms. Um, so when CDPR says that they are in alpha or pre-alpha, this is the field that a lot of other studios say that is their beta. And when CDPR goes into beta for a game, <clears throat> uh, other studios that are on comparative, that, that you could compare them against, other studios <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> uh, will release a game 
where CDPR says it's in beta and it's still being developed, other studios at that point have already pushed the game out for release. So this is this is really really important to to notice when you're talking about um, the release of Cyberpunk 2077 is that right now there this this game that we saw is pre-alpha. When have you ever seen a game this polished in pre-alpha? You you don't you simply don't see games in pre-alpha um, being this polished, and that's the way that CDPR has this direct translation of this game is. X because X. Um, in this case, there those X's is this game is in alpha because the dic dif dictionary definition of what an alpha means means this, and we are following this as a strict rule of, of development process. Right now, they don't know if all of the features that are in the game currently are all the ones that they're going to add or if all the ones that are currently in are going to make it to release. Um, so they get these things, they get these uh, features up to the point where they're perfectly polished and then they decide whether it can go into the game or not. So that makes their pre-alpha the longest period of development. It makes their alpha usually extremely short. Um, I think Blood and Wine's alpha period was about a month. And then beta was like two months. And then they went to release. Hmm. So they went from pre-alpha to release, as far as I can tell, and don't quote me on this because I'm I, right now I'm I'm being very generalistic and I'm recalling things off of memory. Um, I believe that the 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 time that it took them to go from pre-alpha to release was less than it was for sure less than six months. Um, and I think to me, if memory serves me right, it was close to like three and a, three and a half four months was what it actually revolved down to. If that's the case, then incorporating that you 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 know you can you can expect this game basically like any time in 2019 for sure um again don't go me on that i'm just saying in general how they produce their games that's typically what they do so so spot on rave in the in the comment thank you for uh saying that because that's that is 100 percent, and i forgot to mention that so Absolutely, right on. Thank you very much. And yeah, there's uh, so some uh, some difference in terminology between different game companies as we've as we've seen. Uh, uh, some take a pre-alpha and and just shove it shove it out the door and call it a release yeah. game. <laughs> and then some companies are a little more meticulous, and uh, we definitely like that. Even though it takes a lot longer. I mean, having having that polished product. Uh, that you can just dive right into and uh, have a quality experience is definitely absolutely. Uh, that's what I and, want. As and a not gamer. To, yeah. yeah, and not to say that that if they run into a major issue, like right now they're having issues with the um, shooting through walls thing. Um, if they run into a major issue and they just can't get it working on the current consoles, then they have to go back to the drawing board on that. And CDPR is this type of studio who will go back and completely overhaul that part of the game and that can add you know that can add a year of de development onto well, the something title something fundamental like that yeah because then yeah you, that's, you don't that's just a big fundamental yeah yeah you have to rework level design you have to re you have to rebalance a whole bunch of things i would imagine if you're yeah. changing something so uh such a a fundamental game mechanic like destructible environments um yeah and that and that's huge like we saw that with uh fallout 4 fallout 4 had this vastly destructible environment and then they scaled back on it quite significantly and that caused a, a, a large shift in the development and release time um so you know and it negatively impacted other aspects to the game as well yeah. they weren't able to to flush out as many things as they wanted to um and we ended up getting a bunch of you know big free patches which was nice like you know the, the graphics were not that great but then about you know less than six months later they popped out a uh of a huge graphical pack and now they have a 4k uh graphical pack i think um or not maybe not 4k it's there's another one out there where it's like it's just it's just huge so yeah so totally normal totally normal but anyways all right 
Well, that's all we have for this morning, but uh, thank you so much, everybody, for supporting this show, for the great conversation and chat. Uh, we want to especially thank our Patreon supporters, Old Man Manson, Jeranon, and our two anonymous supporters. Thank you very much for helping us do what we do. Don't forget to like and sub if you appreciate this weekly content, and if you're listening after the fact on SoundCloud, we thank you for your follows and likes on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Thank you for subscribing and reviewing the show. And hey, feel free to join us next Saturday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time for the live show where you can interact with us and other listeners and be a part of the discussion. The Augmented Reality Podcast is a presentation of the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, news updates, and tons more quality gaming content. My name is Ash Inity, and on behalf of Cybsidian, thank you so much for listening, and we will talk to you next week. <laughs>